phytochemical research and health is booming in the world today. And there's a lot of argument about this issue. But I thought it would be perhaps a good idea if we went through this little exercise together. What is a phytochemical? Phyto is plant, chemical is a chemical, so phytochemical are chemicals in plants. That's basically what it means. And in plants, besides the nutrients like the carbohydrates, the fats, and the proteins, you have a lot of these phytochemicals. And some of these phytochemicals are anti-carcinogenic. They fight cancer and they prevent diseases. So phytoestrogen, for example, is a very important phytochemical. And many plant foods contain phytoestrogens. Now don't get confused. A phytoestrogen is not the same as a normal estrogenic hormone in the female. Women produce estrogen, the female hormone, and men that consume phytoestrogen won't suddenly become effeminate. Definitely not. These chemicals are similar to estrogens, but they're not the same. Now, a woman, for example, in menopause will have all kinds of symptoms that are debilitating. And so she will go to the doctor, and the doctor will prescribe hormone replacement therapy. Isn't that right? And he will prescribe estrogens to replace the natural estrogens that have been taken out of the system. What happens then is that you are supplying a synthetic or extracted estrogen to take the place of what you have lost, and it has been found that that estrogen is carcinogenic. And so your risk of breast cancer is greatly increased when you take those type of estrogens. Now, plants contain natural estrogens, which are not like mammalian estrogens, but they compete for the binding site, and strangely enough, these are anti-carcinogenic. And so, women and men need these phytoestrogens in their diets. Health benefits of diets rich in phytoestrogens would include, for example, prevention of breast cancer. Gentlemen, in case you thought that that only applied to women, prostate cancer and other cancers are prevented by phytoestrogens. Heart disease and stroke, osteoporosis, menopausal symptoms, brain diseases linked to aging, Alzheimer's, and all of these can be retarded greatly by phytoestrogens, alcoholism, if you were an alcoholic and you have to overcome the negative effects, then phytoestrogens can help. And inflammatory diseases such as rheumatoid arthritis, all of these are benefited by diets rich in phytoestrogens. So you really want to get those into your diet. They are what we call nature's designer estrogens. Imbalances in estrogen are strongly linked to many major Western diseases, including heart disease, cancer, prostate, and breast cancer. And excess estrogen, that's normal estrogen that you would get in hormone replacement therapy, therapy for example, can promote the growth of cancers. And you want to prevent that. So what can women do, for example, if they want to have a normal, relatively normal, healthy lifestyle, when they get into their menopausal years without taking all these medications that can be so problematic. So what are phytoestrogens? Here's a little definition. Phytoestrogens are natural plant molecules similar in shape and size to human body estrogen, but not identical. And this slight difference means they don't have all the same effects of estrogen, and luckily, since some of the effects of estrogen can be nasty. So, what do they do? They help to control dementia. That's people who uh, do not remember things and uh, develop age, uh, loss of memory, and Alzheimer's disease, cognition, uh, alcoholism, immune system. And then also the symptoms of menopause, uh, heart flushes, menopausal symptoms, endometriosis, osteoporosis, all of those can be uh, limited by phytoestrogens. Cancers, 
prostate, colon, breast, leukemia, all general cancers, skin cancer, inflammatory diseases, kidney diseases, cardiovascular uh, improvements. So you can see that this is very, very widespread. Lately, because the name is phytoestrogen, there have been some articles which would suggest that plants rich in phytoestrogen can be a problem and cause disease, like, for example, the soybean. Of course, none of this is true, and reputable scientists over the world have recognized that there is some uh, skullduggery there trying to undercut natural foods for the sake of some other industries. So don't believe everything that you read. If you want to know exactly what it is that has been isolated as the key component in some foods, for example, Brussels sprouts, has a compound which is known as synegrin. And broccoli, uh, sulforaphane, and also diatheotones, etc. So there are all the citrus fruit contains limolein, and so we have certain foods, phytic acid in grains, for example, these are some of the compounds that occur in these products. And they can work at different levels. They can either prevent carcinogens from actually doing their thing, or once they've actually initiated the cancer process, they can prevent it by preventing tumor promotion by, through oxidative damage or prostaglandins or steroids or any one of those. Here's a little list for you. Garlic, for example, is rich in sulfides, monoterpenes, triterpenes, phenolic acids. The herb teas in general are rich in flavonoids, glucerates, cumarins, phenolic acids. Soybeans can see a very good spread. Grains have a very good spread. Cruciferous vegetables, that's all your cabbage family. Cabbage and broccoli and Brussels sprouts and all of those one of your best anti-cancer foods. In fact, if it wasn't for the cabbage, the Germans wouldn't exist anymore. <laughs> and your umbiliferous vegetables, that's your carrots and your celery and your parsley and all of those are also very, very rich in these foods. So, yes, garlic is, for example, a number one on the list of it in terms of power. But if you have a date, for example... You could go for the cruciferous and you'd find everything there in the cabbage family that you will find in the garlic, every single one of those components. Perhaps not so much, but at least you don't blow your partner away. <laughs> and here are some more of them. Citrus is quite good. Zolanaceae, that's your potato and your tomato and all of those. By the way, gentlemen... The tomato is very good because it contains compounds which are anti-prostate cancer. So start including lots of tomatoes in your life. And uh, curcubidacea, I like these names. That's uh, the pumpkin family. Anything from squashes through whatever. They're pretty good. Licorice, you can make teas from licorice. And flaxseed, 